Matt's trying to recover from the food processor breakdown, but it isn't getting any easier. Fortunately, the kitchen wasn't equipped with a drum sieve, so I couldn't really pass my mouse through a fine sieve, so I'm struggling a wee bit. He's reduced to using an ordinary blender. It won't work as well, but time's running out and he has to move on. Is that your beetroot then going in? That's it. On papillot. So that's and obviously in the, in the tin foil with your seasonings. I'm going to steam it. And you put a touch of balsamic in the, balsamic in the roasty, so taking advantage of the new rules of the, uh, <laughs> the Great British menu. <laughs> well, that's it. That's you it. Why not? Yeah, why not? The judges have upped the challenge this year. Since we now live in a multicultural society, as long as the main ingredient in each dish is local, the chefs can also use produce from anywhere to be really creative. How's the mousse going? Well, I don't have a drum sieve, so I'm just going to have to try my best with this. You try and cover every scenario and then... Well, that's it, you know? Of course, the one you don't cover. Is Tom having a dig there? Because Matt does prepare so carefully. So, your lamb was up in the Glenshima. Yeah, Glenshee, a small, a small hill farm up there. Uh, you don't get any more rustic than Glenshee. Fantastic, yeah. standing on top of the mountain. Uh huh. Absolutely freezing, as you can imagine. Yeah. But no, fantastic place. Nothing but the best will do for Heston Blumenthal and the banquet in June. Matt's been using the same supplier for years and knows just how good the lambs are. There are 800 sheep on this farm, roaming over 1,200 acres of prime Scottish hill country. It was a two-hour-plus journey for Matt to the mains of Dalrolsian, but worth it because David Stewart's flock has won loads of prizes. The white-faced ones in the pen, they are their vertex crosses, okay. and they are really famed for their broad loins. Right, OK. Try to breed with the best quality that I can get, right. being the, the best carcass. Best carcass? Don't let the sheep hear you. David has built up this flock by careful breeding with top-class rams. So this guy's one man on his own, is he? He's got to look uh, after old ladies. Yes, with this lot, he's uh, got 70 ladies to attend to. Uh, and he's pretty well through them at the moment. Yeah. He must be exhausted, poor lamb. The result of all his hard work are carcasses, oh, there, I've said it now, which are ideal for Matt. Okay. If you put your hand up here and feel along the loin, okay. uh, see how broad it is. Well, the loin's the bit I'm interested in, so... Yeah, you can certainly feel it. And up here at the shoulder, the shoulder's very broad in this breed as well. Yeah, it is. I've been using your, your lamb for a lot of years, and it's nice to come to the farm and actually see, see them in the flesh, so to speak. And um, I'm sure this is the... These beasts will be great for my dish and great British menu. I'm looking forward to using it. I'm sure it will. Thank you. Back in the kitchen, Tom's making a jus to braise his lettuce in. It'll be served alongside his Barnsley lamb chop and offal. Having turned down Tom's earlier offer to help, Matt's making his own jus. They're very competitive, these guys. There you get some lovely bits of meat there. Well, that's it. You know, I just think you can get the good trimmings off it. So, you know, it's good enough to eat when it comes back out then. Oh, yeah. Have that for my lunch. <laughs> Matt's fighting his way back after his earlier disaster when the food processor broke down.